The Speedgo is a shoe that I've been stoked on since it's come out. I've literally tried every version, but I've never quite got it to fit right just for my feet. The 5 is completely redesigned from outsole to upper. Will this be the one that finally works? So quick disclaimer up front, I'm an REI employee, but the opinions I'm about to share today are mine based on my personal experience in the shoes. Yeah, it's exciting. Yeah, I work at REI. Yeah. yeah. So let's talk about the tech specs for the Speed Goat 5. They come in weighing at one pound, 4.6 ounces for the pair, or about 10.3 ounces each shoe. So the stack height on the Speed Goat 5 is gonna be 33 millimeters in the heel and about 29 millimeters in the forefoot with a four millimeter drop or offset for the shoe. I was hesitant about Hoka when we first started carrying them at REI just because they're such an interesting design and they're so different than most of the shoes we carried. But it wasn't really until I fell in love with the Torrent, which has only been around for a few years. It's kind of like in the same family as the Speed Goat that I was like, wow, Hoka's are the best. Before I got into the Torrents, the shoe I really wanted to get into was the Speed Goat. And the Speed Goat is named for Carl Meltzer. He's arguably the most accomplished, maybe not even arguably, just definitively the most accomplished ultra runner. It's probably the first trail runner that I was like really, really excited about and the one that I was really, really bummed I couldn't fit in. Previous versions of the Speed Goat had this overlay kind of on the top uh, near the forefoot. When I would land on my forefeet or even if I'd land on my heels but take the gate cycle all the way through, kind of have that bend and you can see where that kind of bend is, that plastic would kind of dig into the top part of my foot. This time there's no plastic and now I've been able to actually test out the shoe on a few different runs. So let's take a deeper dive into the redesigned Hoka and what I really dug about it and kind of how it fits super different for me. So we'll start with the upper. They've put this like stretchy material on here. Also should provide for some kind of lateral expansion in the toe box. There's been different versions of the shoe that had some width concerns. You know, some of them were a little bit more narrow in the toe box. This actually feels like it's given you a pretty decent toe box. And for me, it feels like there's enough width there, but it's kind of nice that it's got a little bit of that wiggle room uh, with that stretchy material in the front. When I put the shoe on, one of the other things I noticed as far as the upper goes is that you do have a little bit more volume in the shoe than I've noticed uh, previously. So I I did go with the heel lock tie once I actually got it on the trail, just to kind of keep me a little bit more secure. And looking particularly at the heel, you know, it's got this really distinctive Hoka heel that lots of their shoes have. Like it makes me think of the Clifton um, at this point that's got kind of a similar heel. To me, it's, it's kind of cool looking, but it really just has my heel slipping out a lot on this shoe, um, which is why I went with the heel lock tie. I think that this has become kind of like a design and a style calling card for Hoka. And it's cool when I see that, I'm like, fast? For me, I'd rather have a heel that fits a little bit more snug and kind of comes back, but I get that it looks cool. Speaking of the heel lock tie, when I did do that, you can see that there wasn't a ton of lace left. I can do probably my favorite tie on most of my shoes, which is what I've heard some people call the Tibetan Trekker, and I continue to call it Tibetan Trekker because it's a cool name. But basically, when I did the heel lock tie, I just felt like I was like grasping to do that last little knot. So wish the laces were a little bit longer in that regard. The call out there on the speed go on the heel is just kind of that cool thing, that iconic logo that lots of folks are used to seeing. So you can feel like Carl Meltzer when you're on the trail, which is pretty rad. The rest of the shoe, the rest of the upper, I should say, is kind of got this really designed um, knit feel that's kind of common in lots of trail and road shoes at this point. But because this is a trail shoe, it's actually double layered there. So it should keep some of the dirt out a little bit more. It should allow for a little bit more protection. So in talking about a complete redesign for the shoe, a big update in the Speed Goat 5 is actually the foam that they're using in the midsole. So Hoka went with a new compound to try to give a really good compromise of energy return and cushioning that was actually a little bit lighter this version. So I was really excited about that and stoked to see how it played out when I took it out on the trail. The midsole is kind of like the story for all Hoka's. The midsole is where the ride comes and where it gives you that kind of like traditional or that iconic Hoka feel. When you put a Hoka shoe on, you actually sit recessed in the heel a little bit more and your forefoot gets recessed. So basically you sit down in the cushion and it gives you that stability. This is the most cushioned trail shoe, at least the, the most stack height the stackiest trail shoe that I've ever worn that has the most stack height. It's okay, almost there. Too much verbal excitement. So moving to the outsole of this shoe, updated this time with some Vibram Mega Grip. I know I get really excited every time I turn a shoe over and I see that yellow insignia. So when I look at a trail running shoe, the first thing I look at is the tread. I look at the traction on the outside because it can be cool. 
this isn't that cool looking, but I know what it means. And Mega Grip is a cool name. It inspires confidence. I know that it's going to be pretty sticky. Up here in the Pacific Northwest, obviously lots of muddy trails, lots of kind of wet trails. So I'm excited that it's got that kind of sticky rubber on there. There's also some pretty interesting choices for the pattern here. So Lots of times in trail runners, you'll see that the tread goes in one direction in the forefoot and in the opposite direction in the heel. And that helps with braking. It helps with inspiring confidence on lots of different terrain. But if you actually look in the forefoot too, there's like some that are going in a forward direction and some that are going in a backward direction. I land a lot on my forefeet and on my midfoot. So I think that's actually a cool feature. That's the redesigned Speed Goat 5 from Upper to Outsole. So far, I've put about 45 miles on this shoe. A combination of some like more local city parks with trails that are just kind of like muddy, certainly dirt, but maybe a little bit more hard packed. Some of the more regional parks, which have been definitely a lot more rooty and rocky, and again, still muddy and wet. And then some stuff that was a little steeper, a lot of steeper, trying a little bit harder. Again, also because they're steeper to go up, they're steeper to come down. And I really just kind of wanted to see how these would grip something that when I was moving at speed, having a ton of fun, Fun, maybe trying to get into a flow state. So definitely got to bomb down hills in them, definitely got to kind of just cruise some more gravel paths in them. And I feel like I've gotten like a good variety of experiences in this shoe. The tread has obviously been pretty solid, especially when things are wet. I don't feel like I'm gonna be slipping, especially we have like lots of wet stairs on local parks that I run on. And for sure, I feel like that mega grip helps inspire that confidence when I'm running in those types of trails. On the ascents, especially when there's like really loose stuff, it felt like it's been able to grip fairly well, uh, which is really nice. It hasn't been anything off trail for sure, but certainly again, with that loose stuff, I felt like I've been able to get a good grip. I wasn't slipping around anywhere. And then on those descents, I actually felt like I can stick the landing. And maybe it is that little like reverse traction. At least that's what I tell myself it is. Every time like, you know, when you land on something and you're like, I don't know if I'm gonna stick that, you just imagine the traction hitting that and you're like, yeah, it'll work, it'll work, it'll work. So I picture that kind of reverse pattern there hitting that. So far it's worked, so I don't know, maybe it's the power of the mind, but probably the power of the shoe a little bit. So when I've tried to run a little bit faster on, in those regional parks, especially going downhill, I can feel my foot kind of going into the foam, but not in a way that's like super squishy. Honestly, there's a lot of energy return in this. One of the things that I think is kind of a misnomer for lots of hokas is that people think it's gonna be a really cushioned ride, but a lot of times the midsoles are still have that like compromise with responsive and energy return. And this shoe really does that for me. So I feel like I have cushion underfoot, but I still feel like I bounce back, which is a really fun fun way to run downhill because you're just like, okay, pick up your feet faster, still have a lot of fun and not feeling like anything underfoot. So, so far that's been really solid. One of the first runs I ever took this on was during this run where I turned 33 and a third. I tried to do this thing where I wanted to run 33.3 miles, a record spin at 33 and a three revolutions per minute. Anyways, we broke up this run into three different legs um, and each leg was 11.1 miles and we did a trail leg and I started running in it and I was like, yeah, this feels good, but after a couple miles, I was like, oh man, my Achilles feels weird, my knees feel weird, um, and I thought it might have just been a little bit tired. I had like 15 miles on me at that point, and I was like, but maybe I should try switching the shoes, and I tried just switching the shoes into my torrents, and my body's like, yep, this is better. So again, it was just my body just wasn't used to it. Now I've worn these shoes for, you know, about a month now, again, about 45 miles, and my feet and my body feel great in them, but certainly there was a little bit of that adjustment period just because there's a higher platform on this shoe. So obviously super excited that the Speedgo 5 is a shoe that I finally fit in. And when I think about running down hills, I think about Hoka shoes and specifically these <laughs> Speedgoats. And I've been able to experience, again, love that idea of just bombing down the hills in Hokas. My favorite trail runner still probably is the Hoka Torrent 2. So when I compare those shoes together, this shoe is a little bit heavier than that. And it does feel like it takes me a little bit longer to pick up my feet. The Torrent 2 is lighter weight. It's a little less cushioned. I'm a little bit closer to the ground. So I feel like I have a little bit more um, nimbleness in my runs, which I kind of dig. And I still have like the amount of cushioning that I like. This shoe, I wonder if it'll like, I haven't tried any really, really long efforts in it. And this might be a shoe for that, but so far I think on my shorter runs, I feel like it's a little bit heavier than like I would prefer sometimes. Certainly a positive experience, but maybe just like one that I'm thinking like, oh, I could do with a little less cushion for me. The other thing that I will say 
his tongue is super short. <laughs> like, I don't dig that. I know it's not a super big deal, but I think it's kind of interesting to put like the mesh as double layer to try to keep stuff out. And then like your tongue is just like entirely short. It just feels like not the same idea cohesively. And there's, like, there's a pretty big opening here. And sometimes if you're wearing lower socks, especially if I'm taking the shoe out, like maybe on some of my local city runs, then I might not need like, you know, a longer sock. I'm going to be on a shorter run. It just feels really, really short. And it kind of comes in sometimes a little bit. I don't know. I, it just doesn't feel good. It feels like it, it kind of bothers me a little bit. It sinks into the shoe a little bit too. So it's that time of year where I'm starting to dream of all these cool trail and longer run ideas. And I can see the shoe fitting into a lot of those ideas. Obviously, it broke the fastest known time on all of the Appalachian Trail. So the shoe is capable of a ton of things. So I'm, I'm kind of excited to see where it shines. Let's see how it shines. Yeah, shoe shine is interesting. Shoe shine. <laughs> Nah, I don't even have to say that. I'm really excited to see how the shoe shines. <laughs> <laughs> Can we start from there or should I take it all the way from the shoe shine? <laughs> I feel like we got it. So I'm really excited to hear from you all. What do you dig about the Speed Go? Where do y'all like to run in it? I get super inspired by reading all, not reading all the comments, not all of them are inspiring. <laughs> Running journeys are inspiring. <laughs> I get really inspired by hearing about people's running journeys. So feel free to leave a comment below. Uh, that's it, period. Yeah, <laughs> so I should stop there. <laughs> Weird ending. <laughs>